Hey, welcome back to Ross Twitter Garage. And if you have a short attention span, this video is for you because this is gonna be a quick one. It is late, it is after work, and I need to get some stuff done outside before the morning because it is gonna rain tonight and I don't wanna be moving vehicles around in the rain because it'll just make a mud hole in my lawn. I don't wanna do that. So we'll talk about why I'm moving those things around a little later. But I was bad. I bought something expensive for the build, something I do not usually do, um, and that would be the gauges. So normally on these builds, I just saw this, what is this? I think it's a phone holder, I found it at a parts car. Um, normally when I do these builds, I make my own gauges or make my own gauge panel and buy aftermarket gauges to fit in. But I try to do it as, you know, as reasonable as I possibly can. The last, uh, I'll say, well, I won't say the last, but I've installed Marshall gauges in probably three builds. I really like the way they look. Every single set I have bought has had a problem with a gauge. Always one gauge has a problem with. Twice I've had problems with oil pressure gauges and once with the speedometer. And it just, it starts to get to be a hassle. You want to get the thing built and... I actually still have a problem with the oil pressure gauge in the 51 Hudson. I just have not had time to take it out and send it for repair or whatever. I'll probably replace it with new. But anyway, it's a hassle. So sometimes I build my own gauges, and that's a really low buck way to go. But these trucks, um, I love the dash. I love the V section, and that would be this, you know, this bezel housing here. I just love the way that looks. So I was bad, and I bought... An aftermarket gauge cluster that I have not peeled off the protective cover yet and we will do that and this was a major expense and, uh, and I know this is a budget build but I really wanted you know gauges you're always looking at I wanted to do something at least I hope that will be decent this is what brand is this Intellitronics and after I bought this this is an analog setup they also make them with digital stuff but I thought I wanted this more original style race so this is an analog setup and i'll peel this off and i'll show you what they look like what i did as far as wiring this up is they come with pigtails on the back i took a connector out of one of the silverados this may even be a door connector i'm not sure but one half of it is here and one half is in the truck and that way with this guy here i can just unplug and plug the gauges or take them back out or anything, which hopefully they don't. Uh, it says they come in a lifetime warranty. So it comes as an assembly like this. And here we go. I'm going to peel this off. And we'll see what they look like together. This is sticky. And there it is. Where's the camera? I think that's a, a pretty neat setup there. Analog gauges, and it has everything. Gas gauge already set to 0 to 90, which matches the sending unit. And I think it'll do 0 to 90 or 0 to 30, which is early, like 55 and older or 56 and older. I'm not sure when they switched, but there are dip switches on there uh, in the back for that. And I'm sure it could do other values as well. Um, of course, it's an electronic programmable speedometer, so that'll be easy to set up to calibrate, and it should be a neat, neat little thing here. And the other thing I did was I bought one with purple backlighting, so I just think it's cool. I want to see what it looks like with the purple dash. It's not, I'm hopefully not like purple in your face purple. I'm sure it'll just be something cool, but uh, I have to mount this. The only thing you have to do with this is you have to use your original bezel and mine is in fair condition not the best but we'll use it and i had to buy hardware because it didn't come with any screws and i had to buy some 832s that are one and a quarter inch long and i think that'll work let's put it together and see what happens all right so this should be pretty simple i already disassembled my original cluster obviously to get the bezel and this should fit right over this, and there are alignment pins 
on the bezel and they should fit into the cluster or should because I see them there I can't see the hole or is it going in let's see here how difficult can this be so you have these little pins here on the bezel there are holes in the cluster for those to fit into. If they don't fit, I'll grind them down a little bit, but let me try again with them. All right, my fault. <laughs> those pins are not supposed to go into the holes in the cluster because they can't. There's just physically not enough room, so there's a gap. All right, well, <laughs> some days later, what I thought was going to be a five-minute video was not a five-minute video, but I think it'll still be short, but I had to punt because I had to go get different hardware because this does not mount up like I thought it would. Like I said, you know, they have these little pins on the, the chrome bezel and matching holes in the cluster you'd think would fit together, but it doesn't. There's a gap. So I had to get longer screws, turn out to be uh, 832 by one and a half. And then I also put a strain relief on the back to keep the wires from being tugged on. So I think there's nothing left to do now but to put it in and see if it works. All right, so the easy part should be plugging it in since like I said, I made an umbilical out of what I, you know, I think was a, uh, you can see it there. Uh, I think it was a Silverado door connector. When you pull a door off, they have these easy to remove latches here. So I'm gonna hook this together like that and that snapped right together and I, I heard it do something even though I have the key off right now. We'll see. This should just fit in the hole. At least it should. all right so far so good i gotta put the screws in but i'll see if i can get you in a better position let me put the screws in and we'll see if it works all right screws are in i'll try to hold the tripod everything looks like it turned on See what happens. Well, the tack is not right. But that I can change in the in the tune. I can't remember if I set this the the tune for the eight cylinder or not. I have to double check that. But voltage is reading, oil pressure is reading. I don't have any lights hooked up, but my turn signal indicators are lighting up. Headlights. I don't have any headlights hooked up right now, so I don't, oh, there we go, headlights on, there's my dimmer going on and off. So the only thing I have to check is the tack, and that may be in my tune, because it turns on and resets. And now it's working. <laughs> That's not real good. I don't know what's up with that. All right, I don't want to run it too long because we got no coolant in it. All right, well, <laughs> it works. I don't know what the deal is with the, the tack not working and then working. I don't know if it's something where it just has to be.
be powered on and learn or something. I can't remember. I, I, I think I set the, uh, the tune for eight cylinder because normally an LS is set to four cylinder. I'm pretty sure I set the tune to eight. Um, but anyway, it works. I'll have to keep an eye on that and see if that's just something where every time I disconnect the battery, it needs to reset or something. I don't know. I will say that <laughs> right before I was going to make this video, somebody put a post up on one of the Tri-5 truck boards asking if anybody had used one of these. And the reviews were mixed. Um, not a lot of people had great things to say about this company, but... I like the way it looks and my fingers are crossed that it's okay and that people just had problems for other reasons. A lot of times when you have bad reviews, uh, it's not always because the product was bad or because they didn't have it installed or whatever, but it was pretty straightforward. My coolant temperature switch or sensor rather is right in the this rear of the passenger cylinder head. I showed you how I tapped that for three eighths and there's just a three eighths to one eighth bushing there for the coolant temperature sensor oil pressure sender that they sent me. I had to use a couple um, 90s to get it out of the way of where I have things because it's where it is in relation to the firewall. But it fit fine. So that's reading fine. And I mm, guess that's it. So we'll keep an eye on it and see how it works. Um, that was a major expense. So now I have to add it to the budget. And also the uh, gas gauge is working. It reads accurate. It's almost, it's just above E, which has got to be right. There's hardly anything in it. Voltmeter was working. So all the gauges right now look like they're working fine. Uh, like I said, major expense, much more than I would normally spend on gauges. That was $585. That's a lot of money for me, <laughs> but we did it. So it looks cool. Lifetime warranty. Hope I don't have to use it, but at least that's a little bit of security. So adding that to the budget, $585. That gets the truck value to $6182 and money out of pocket $2857. So almost to $3,000, which leaves a little over $2,000 left in the budget to keep it under five grand. Uh, I am going to make an executive decision. I am not going to count the air conditioning parts toward this budget because I'm still not clear on what I want to do. Um, I don't know what unit I want to use in it. I've looked at like eBay combination heat AC and they're, they're ugly. So I'd rather put like a, an old school Chrome type evaporator under the dash. And uh, if to do that, I'm going to have to keep the heat separately. So I'm, I've got something pretty cool, an idea for heat. It'll be a separate project and the AC will be a different project and it might not be done immediately, probably not till spring, but we'll see. But again, it's not necessary to build the truck. So I'm gonna not count those expenses toward the build. We can add them in at the end. I don't think it's gonna be a whole lot, but there's no sense counting parts that aren't gonna get used and I'm not doing the AC yet. So we will be doing the heat though. So I gotta finish up the inside of the cab. I did get my a uh, new radiator just came in to hopefully deal with the problems we had with the original stipe radiator. It is going to need some fabrication, but nothing heavy, and we'll go over all that. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but thank you for watching. Thank you for following along, and thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. We will see you on the next one. Later.